Well, hello everybody, Mike with Spray Jones coming to you with another video and we're going to go over a couple of uh, three things that don't really matter with spray foam that you think that they might. Now these are typical things that people that are just beginning to familiarize themselves with foam and foam installation and think that this is a way of gauging whether they've got a good job, bad job, or just deciphering the information that they're seeing on sites. So we're going to go over three things that really don't matter. The first is quite simple and it's very popular and that is testing the foam with your, your thumb or your fingers. Now this might sound trivial or say well, like what are you talking about? Well a lot of times people will go and they'll start poking around on the foam with their fingers and, and doing what's called like compressive strength testing where you're testing how much it's going to compress and thinking that that is some sort of a density check or a stiffness test to see whether or not the foam is on ratio or off ratio or mixed properly or whatever. So I had this happen on a job site one time, guy went walking around and said, you know, I don't think the foam is as hard as it should be. And I said, well, what makes you think that? And they're like, well, I've been poking it with my thumb. And I'm like, just laughed. I said, you know, that's, that's not how we do it. So, so you understand as the uh, end user or recipient or the person that's doing it is you need to be testing density via displacement. So that means the foam is going to be cut out and uh, they're going to do a core density check, remove top and bottom skins and, and check what the density is going to be. And that's, that's a, a closed cell foam test. They're not going to do that on an open cell because open cell would obviously absorb too much water too quickly and it would skew the results on the foam. So density of the material is relational to compressive strength, obviously, right? Less dense or more dense is going to make it harder to compress it. But going around and poking it with your thumb is not the way that you're going to determine that. You need to do it in a volumatic displacement test. Okay, number two, shaving of the foam. This is a popular one. I get asked this frequently, uh, whether it's closed cell or open cell foam. But let's just concentrate on closed cell for a little bit. Uh, if I shave the foam, if I put it into the wall, into the cavity, and I, you know, it's too thick, or I gotta peel some of it back, uh, is that gonna change the physical properties? Is that gonna wreck it and ruin it and, and harm it in any way? The answer is no, okay? The uh, density of the foam, the cell structure, the type of chemistry that's gone into it from the manufacturer is what's going to be in the physical properties provided that it's been installed properly. But shaving off the foam does not ruin or change the seal, right? Uh, the surface of the spray foam is not where your vapor barrier seal is. Um, so you can poke it, you can shave it, you can cut it, you can open it up. Obviously, if you've got large areas where you've jammed a, a probe in, you're going to want to fill the larger holes and what have you. If the foam is still soft when you do a probe, a lot of times before it's fully, fully uh, hardened, it will close itself up. But going around and shaving off the foam is not going to do any damage to it. I mean, open cell foam, that is exactly what you do with it. You know, the, the cavities are a lot of times overfilled, the excess is shaved off, thrown away in the garbage. Uh, and you, you leave an open-faced um, profile in between the stud walls. Closed cell foam, yes, you can shave it, uh, and it's not going to damage it. It's not going to start to absorb water differently. It's not going to behave differently. You're not going to uh, have a cold spot on the wall where you shave the foam. So, and, and it will reveal the cell structure of the foam so you can get a side profile of that, but the skin is not where the seal is. Third point is color of the spray foam at the surface level. Now, sunlight will fade uh, the spray foam quite a bit. The spray foam is not UV stabilized. They're not going to spend any money putting a UV stabilizer. So the foams are going to go to a yellow and a gray and an orange. Depends on what initial tints or any pigments that were placed in the foams from the manufacturers. So for instance, BSF in Canada has got the purple. That's going to go to a gray within 24 hours of being in sunlight. And then it's eventually going to go to a, a yellow and then into an orange. Most of the other spray foams, Huntsman and what have you, that are have greens to begin with, they're going to fade out uh, into a yellow and then into an orange within 24 and 72 hours of being in direct sunlight. Likewise, spray foams will have different colors uh, depending on temperature. So if, uh, if you were spraying in the morning and it was cooler, the foam might be a little bit richer, darker color uh, because the foam mixture was just a little bit more dense and it just, it just did not, it had more pigment, more dye or what have you, more uh, richness to it 
in the cooler weather and then as it gets warmer it's normal for things to lighten up a tiny little bit uh, so the hue on the on the foam can look different and that's why especially when we're putting a second pass over top of the spray foam the second pass over top of the already insulated substrate that particular shade of foam will a lot of times be a little bit lighter than the initial shade that went down that is a little bit of a higher density and a, a darker uh, color so it's nothing to be concerned about. I had an individual one time saying, you know, when you put second pass on, I noticed it looked a little bit lighter. Why is that? Um, a lot of the manufacturers now, I think, are going to trademark colors, um, even if they're not required to. In Canada, we are. We are required to have readily identifiable by sight. That's starting to become a little bit of a blurred line. There's a few manufacturers out there that have similar colors to each other, very similar. It's hard to tell them without sort of a color card index. But in the United States, I think this is going to become very popular within the next four to five years where you're going to see each, indi each individual manufacturer uh, coloring their products so that you know exactly what it is. But looking at the base of the foam, uh, what color it is, is not a really good indicator as to whether or not you've got a good product or not. Um, open cell foams that are a, a buttery color or a white color are going to fade out to a yellow and then into eventually into an orange uh, within a short amount of time as well due to direct sunlight. So uh, this is just normal. Nobody's wanting to pay for uh, UV stabilizers because there's no point. The foam's always going to be covered or out of sight uh, behind drywall or paneling or what have you. So if you really want to know what condition the foam is in uh, and you want to verify it, you've got to cut into it. Now, foam that has been bleached a bit uh, in the sunlight and has taken on the orange color and hue, uh, yes, more foam can be placed over top of it. When it gets to be really oxidized, sometimes scratching up the surface is required in order to put a new fresh pass. I had uh, a house that was done uh, seven years ago. We sprayed a first pass on everything and it sat for seven years while the homeowners worked out some personal stuff. And then just recently in 21, 2021, right at the tail end in December, right before Christmas, we came back and finished it seven years later. So the home was very, very orange on the inside from all the sunlight coming through on the in, inside of it. We didn't have to scratch it up. Um, we sprayed a little bit of foam on it. We did a couple of pull checks just to make sure it was sticking tenaciously. Only the most heavily uh, oxidized areas next to large picture windows did we scratch them up a little bit. And even then, um, the first one eight, three sixteenths of an inch was all that was sort of uh, uh, augmented if you will that needed some additional help so once you scratch to fresh foam you were good to go so surface color is not a really good indicator of whether or not you've got good product or bad product you've got to cut into it and see so there you go lay out some comments lay out some additional questions share this content with somebody that needs to see it and i will catch you on a new video coming up soon